That's the end of the five elements of unity. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Are you tired? I ain't tired. I am not tired. I'm sorry. If you, it, 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 it goes to sleep, but it, it's, it's got to come out because uh, this would not be a disturbance in Israel, United in Christ, in IUIC, Columbia. It would not be the new stage of some ill, crazy situation taking place in this body. That ain't going to happen. We're going to smash it across the head. Officer Thon going to come back. He's going to knock it across the head. I don't, I don't get all the officers of 50 and up to come back and beat it across the head. If it got to be the same class over and over and over and over, there will be no disturbance of the union that we are building here. When we find you out, we're going gonna, gonna to make sure that paperwork is done to get you up out of here. Straight up. You will not be the, uh, what they call it, the, uh, 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 the agitator. That ain't going to be you. If you're the agitator, it's going to be easy to find you out as the person or the tear or the person with disunity because there's going to be so much harmony amongst everybody else. Hey. Yeah, we should, be, we should be trying to establish the harmony in here at a vibration so high that when that negative person even begins to, when the thought comes out of the, come, pops in their brain, we can identify. Oh, you got damn devil on you. Security. Right here. Right over here. This one right here. Get your ass up out of here. That's how it's got to go down. There will be no disturbance. Now, let's look at the five elements of disunity. The opposite of unity is what? Disunity. So if you're not unified, you are not unified. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. If you are not unified, you are not unified. Simple as that. You are causing disunity. Signs of disunity and lacking the spirit. Division of beliefs, divisions in doctrine, divisions in how things are done in the body. That's this individual right here, all right? In the scriptures, worshipers or uh, commandment keepers, the Israelites, are freak we frequently fell into adultery. Today, you can idolize yourself. Guess what? That's adultery. If your kid is too precious for Officer Marshall to correct in the classroom, and you give him everything, and he's your world, that's adultery. If you like to watch TV more than you like to study, that's adultery. You love that thing. Anything that you love more than the spirit of Christ in this union that we're building, you're in the midst of adultery. All right? So let me get Deuteronomy chapter 32, 16 and 17, just real quick. I ain't going to stay on this one too long. I ain't going to stay on it too long. I promise. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy uh -huh. with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. So this is what we did. This is what the Israelites did. Our forefathers. This is what we do today. This is what our people is caught up in today. There's a division behind beliefs. One sister believed. She can wear her hair wrapped like this. The other sister believed she should wear her hair wrapped like that's a division. That's why the, the mandate was put out. Just cover your whole head. Just cover it up. Now, you're in the same mind and the same spirit. Just cover your head up, sis. That's it. It ain't that hard to figure out. It ain't that hard to, to, uh, to, to do. You just got to stay in the spirit. Do not be, do not let anything be more important than your keeping of the commandments. Your job and how much money you make can become adultery. Idolatry. You know, I get, I'm country. I say it wrong now. I say it wrong. I, I got I to gotta enunciate my I. Idolatry. <laughs> I got to say it right. I didn't say adultery. I'm talking about being, I'm talking about idols. How about that? How about, how about that? You got that? I'm talking about idols. I'm country, so you probably heard adultery, but I, I meant idolatry. I, I don't have idols. Your child can be an idol. Your job can be an idol. Your car could be an idol. And by the way, that damn Camaro is not an idol. Matter of fact, if anybody wants to buy it, they can have it. Just let me know. All right? I'm tired of it. I'm just saying. That you can establish idols in your mind and cause division in the body because of what you believe 
instead of what we need to believe according to the spirit. All right? So I'm not going to stay on that one too long. I'm going to try to go on through it. Give me number two is disunity amongst believers with quarrels and faction and fractions. All right? Quarrels and fractions. All right? Let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. Paul often dealt with this thing, man. He had to deal with this thing. We, you, you're going to see. We're going we gonna to be on this one for about 10 minutes. Because Paul had a problem. The church had a problem. And this is the reason you see what's going on across the nation. Because it's problems. It's problems. It's problems that have to be worked out. But we should be endeavoring to keep that unity even though we're having these small issues. They're small. I'm telling you, that they're, they're not that big. Between us, we just, we just got to identify and resolve. Let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. Is that what I said? Yes, sir. All right, read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that ye all speak the same thing. This, is, this will stop half the foolishness that goes on in a body. How do we know? Because Paul was constantly dealing with the churches and telling them the same thing. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna read it. We're going to read it. Paul said what? Well, read it again. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that ye all speak the same thing. Paul said, I beseech you that we all speak the same thing. Come on. And that there be no divisions among you. There should not be no divisions amongst us that we don't get worked out, fix, and keep it moving. It shouldn't. Oh, I don't like the way she said such such. Go tell her that. Fix it, sis. I apologize. I, won't, I mean, I didn't know that. Bam, 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 bam. Let, we, we good. We good. All praise. Let's let's go get some eat. <laughs> Sisters don't operate like that. Hatred. 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 I'm going to hold a grudge for five, ten years. I'm going to hold my grudge. I just don't like you. I just don't deal with you. I don't deal with her. You. That's dangerous. Because you quick to go tell somebody else, I don't deal with her. And then you got the other sister hearing it and don't say nothing. Y'all agree to the evil. You are evil together. You both are tares. Straight up. Tares. Children of the wicked, man. If somebody bring you an evil statement about somebody else and you don't check it, that's because you evil too. <laughs> then what, 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 why would they bring it to you? You ain't finna take that evil to no righteous sister or sister that's walking or walking upright as they can be. You don't take that to a sister. If you have something, when you got something to say about somebody, when you don't take it directly to the person, and you have somebody that you go to and talk to that person about, that's because y'all both evil as hell together. Simple. You are both children of the wicked. You're rolling in the spirit of a tear. Because you damn sure ain't finna go tell the sister who you're saying it about, you didn't go do that, and you didn't go to another sister that you know has a good report in the body and tell her that. You went to that person that you can talk to about these type of things. Evil. Read that again. And that there be no divisions among you. Come on. But that ye be perfectly joined together. We should be perfectly joined together. Perfectly joined together. Come on. In the same mind. In the same mind. And in the same judgment. And in the same judgment. Paul had to constantly deal with the churches concerning this matter. Romans 12 and 16. Come on. Romans chapter 12 and verse 16. Be of the same mind. And we, don't, we, don't, we don't read this like, how many times? We don't read this, how many, how many times we don't read this? In so many different parts of the Bible. Be of the same mind. Come on. One toward another. One toward another. Meaning you should love one another. <laughs> Straight up. Come on. Mind not high things. Don't mind high things. Come on. But condescend to men of low estate. Condescend to men of low estate. Condescend to sisters of low estate. Meaning bring your mind, bring yourself down to their level to understand what they're suffering with, what they're going through, and help them. Be of comfort to them. Don't be going to run your mind about them. Condescend. Bring your high-minded ass down. It says, 
Mind not high things. Those things that are above you that you know the lead sisters and the captains and the stuff are dealing with, they not, don't mind those things. You see that sister over there that's struggling with them kids? Go help her. That sister over there that's sitting there looking like something is bothering her? Condescend and go see what's going on with her. That brother that's struggling with this or that? Condescend and go see what's going on with him. Don't worry about what upper leadership got going on. Condescend. Come on. Be not wise in your own conceits. Don't be wise in your own thinking, in your own conceits. Come on. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Read. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Come on. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. How you going to do that? By uniting. By uniting, by being in one mind, one spirit, under Christ. Romans chapter 15 and verse 5. Romans chapter 15 and verse 5. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded. Again, it's the same thing. It's, it's redundant. And we're going to read this 50 more times. I promise you. Come on. One toward another. One toward another. You should be, uh, uh, you should be like-minded one toward another. Come on. According to Christ Jesus. According to Christ Jesus. Come on. That ye may be. That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says that ye may that ye may with one mind and one mouth. One mouth, meaning my mouth should be saying the same thing as your mouth is saying. Our mouths should be saying the same thing. Not one speaking righteousness and another speaking guile, speaking foolishness. You out the spirit, sister. You have the spirit, brother. We got to speak the same thing as we just read in Corinthians. Having one, have been, that we may be of one mind with one mouth to glorify God. Even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 13 and 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm looking at the wrong one. All right. Now go. Read it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Come on. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be what? Be perfect. Paul said be perfect. Are you perfect when you operate outside of being one mind? No. Are you even in the realm of striving to be perfect when you know you're operating outside of that spirit? No. Christ is speaking through Paul. He said, be perfect. Come on. Be of good comfort. Be of good comfort. Come on. Be of one mind. Uh-huh. Live in peace. And the, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. So the God of love and peace will be with us when we are of one mind. We could be perfect. We could be perfect. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2 again. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy. Fulfill ye the joy. Come on. That ye may that ye be like-minded. Come on. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Read on. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. So don't, 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 that means don't fake it. And don't be out the spirit trying to portray or be something that you are not. Read verse 3 again. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Don't let nothing be done through strife. If if, if you're trying to uh, be or you are faking that you really like this individual and you really don't, you got all of the strife built up in you, you got a problem. You're going to go, it's, and it's going to be manifested. Let nothing, nothing be done through strife. Look up the word strife. Let's get that. Let's look up the definition of strife. Uh-huh. Strife. Come on. Strife. Bitter sometimes. Violent. Uh, what? Violent. Conflict. Dissension. Or dissension. Uh-huh. Come on. An act of contention. An act of contention. Now read this again. Verse 3. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife. Let nothing be done through contention. 
Let nothing be done through bitterness. Let nothing be done through violent conflict or dissension. Come on. Or vainglory. Or vainglory, read. But in lowliness of mind. Meaning humble yourself. Humble yourself. You know how much glory and how much a, 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 a gain you get when you humble yourself? Come on. Let each esteem other. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Meaning, esteem that brother for them great works that he can that he doing. Esteem the brother for for what for what he has accomplished or or, or the, the the thing that you see that's getting some type of honor amongst the congregation. Esteem that brother. Good job, bro. Hey, man, that was that was that was a good video, bro. Hey, I don't know how you made them cuts, but look, I need you to show me how to do that. I appreciate it. Esteem those brothers and sisters. Come on. Look not every man on his own thing. Don't look on your own thing. Don't be prideful about what you got, though. You, you, you don't, don't think that you are the greatest at this thing because there's always somebody better than you. Straight up. Come on. But every man also on the things of others. But let's, look, let's esteem each other and look at the things of others. Come on. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 3, 13 through 19. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind uh -huh. and reaching forth unto those things which are before. That's what we got to do. Reach forward for those things that are before us. The kingdom, come on. I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. Come on. For the prize of the high calling. The prize of the high calling to get the kingdom. Come on. Of God in Christ Jesus. Read on. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Be thus, be, be, be minded of this. Read. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So let me help you. It says, let us therefore, as many be perfect, be thus minded. Be thus minded as be, hold on, as if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall even, God shall reveal even this unto you. Meaning keep your mind focused on the goal, person for the mark. Unless your mind will be distracted and you put your mind on other things. You put your mind on carnal, worldly, mundane things. You put your mind in the realm of hatred, envy, and strife. These things are going to be revealed. Like I said earlier, that we should create a vibration in here of harmony so great that you are able to identify evil out the gate. Straight up. Be minded of these things. Come on, read. 16. Nevertheless, where to? We have already attained. We have already attained? Come on. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us walk by the same rule. Come on. Let us mind the same thing. Let us mind the same thing. Come on. Brethren, be followers together of me uh -huh. and mark them which walk so as ye have, have us for an example. So he said, brethren, be followers together of me. Why? Because Christ is walking in, 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 in Paul. Paul. Paul is operating by the spirit of Christ. He said, brother, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Stack of the bishops. We have the bishops, the deacons. We have the captains. We have righteous men to look at as the example of who follow Christ. So it's easy to identify those that don't. It's easy to identify groups of Israel that don't walk according to the spirit of Christ. It is our job to mind these things and to be thus minded up and to walk after this character. Verse 18. Verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told ye often. He says, many, for many walk of whom I've told you often. Come on. And now tell you even weeping uh -huh. that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. So now, he says, now I tell you weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. But they look the same. The wheat and the tares, they look the same until the time of the harvest. Some of that wheat becomes the enemy of this gospel. I mean, some of that, the, the tares. The tares are the enemy to the gospel. That's what's happening. 
but they got to grow together in order for them to be manifested. Uh, verse 19. Whose end is destruction. Whose end is what? Destruction. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. Whose God is their belly. Come on. And whose glory is in their shame. And their glory is in their shame. Read on. Who mind earthly things. Why? Because they mind earthly things. Because they mind earthly things. Disunity amongst believers with quarrels, fractions. They mind earthly things. When you got quarreling going on, you earthly. You mundane. Because when you walking in the spirit, it's, it's easy to fix that. Bro, hey, bro, you, hey, we need to fix, we need to, we need to fix this, bro. Like, nah, bro, we we ain't getting down like this, 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 that, and the third. Fix it, boom, fix it. Now we walk, we keep walking the walk, we keep talking the talk, we keep our foot on the righteous path. But when you got, oh man, I ain't, you know what, this brother did that in the third. I ain't, I ain't dealing with you. You holding a grudge, bro. It ain't gonna turn into a grudge, no doubt about it. Sis, oh, I ain't messing with that sister. Bye, 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 bye. It's gonna turn into a grudge. Now you in sin, straight up. Now you start talking to everybody else about the problem instead of the person that you got the problem with. You a tear. That's what you are. Straight up. Uh, Philippians 1, 27. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27. Only let your conversation. What? Be, only let your conversation. Don't let your conversation be outside of this. It says only let your conversation. Be as it becometh the gospel let of Christ. Let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel. Your conversation shouldn't be, I sit You are said with me. You are a tear. Tear. That's what you are. You're tear. I'm just showing you who you are. The Bible is showing you who you are. You can fix it. You can fix it. Read that again. Only let your conversation. Be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Uh -huh. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit. That you stand fast in what? One spirit. We got to stand fast in one spirit, man. No divisions. Stand fast in one spirit. Come on. With one mind. With one mind. Come on. Striving together for the faith of the gospel. Striving, endeavoring, fighting together for the faith of this gospel. That's what our mission is. That's what the goal is. And if you are not operating in that spirit, you are operating in the spirit of disunity. That's you. All right. Number three on my list of disunity, discord and strife. Absence of the spirit. Discord and strife. Absence of the spirit. Where the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is absent, discord, strife and thrive. I'm going to say it again. Where the Holy Spirit is absent, discord and strife thrive. Galatians 5.16. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. But if ye bite and devour one another. Do, wait, 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 wait. Read that again. But. Go ahead. But if ye bite and devour one another. It says, but if ye bite and devour one another. Hold on. Where you at, bro? Yeah, you, I'm like, hold on. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You too far ahead of me. Read verse 16. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Okay, I see why you wanted 15. You're in the spirit. You're in the spirit. Read 15. Read 14 here. Verse 14. For all in the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know how heavy that is? <laughs> just, just verse 14. We can stop right there. But we not. Because Negroes need to understand what's going on. You can literally read verse 14 and sum up everything that I just said. Read it again. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. All of the law is fulfilled in one word. What? Even in this, thou shalt love thy Thou shalt what? Thou shalt love. Love, 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 love. The whole law is fulfilled in one word, love. So if you ain't got love for that brother or for that sister, you will, uh, say it again, tear. You're a tear, 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 tear. It's fulfilled in one law, come on. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
If you can't do that, sis, you are the devil and you never will understand what unity is because you don't want to. You don't want unity. You want division. You want confusion. That's what you want. Because you have a selfish goal to obtain something for yourself. That's why. You ain't going to admit it. And you don't need to admit it. Not to me. But when you walk through them doors and we see it, oh, we're going to put an axe on that out the gate. I'm telling you. Everybody who's in the spirit, you let, change your mind. All you got to do, you want to know who out the spirit? Elevate yourself. Elevate yourself and rise above to a, a level of righteousness to where every where everybody in here, we're in one mind, one spirit. We It's love. If you do that, guess what you're going to see? You're going to see exactly who got the damn devil on them. I prom do it. Do it tomorrow. No more when everybody get in here. Do it tomorrow. You'll see. If you do it, you'll see what we can see up here at this table. You'll see it. Elevate yourself and bring yourself to a level of harmony with your with your brothers and sisters and watch how you see who out the spirit. You can feel it. They walk past you like, damn, bro, you all right? Sheesh. Something wrong with that brother right there, bro. You good? Damn, sis. What's wrong with your face? Fix it. Is that makeup or you just mad? What the hell is going on here? Fix it. Read it again. For, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor And I meant thyself. that when I said it. I'm just cutting you off. I really meant that. You can put on all the makeup you want. Fake up. You can't hide that spirit, though. You can put on all the makeup you want. You can't hide the spirit. Simple as that. You mad? Put this in your pipe and smoke it. Read it again. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Come on. But if ye bite and devour one another. But if you bite and you devour one another, come on. Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Take, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Why? Come on. This I say unto, this, this I, I say, say then, then. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. What When you come in, at, walk in this door in the spirit and watch how you see who got a problem. You will be amazed at how many people walk in here. They say, hey, hey, shalom, hey, shalom, shalom, shalom. But they got a problem. Walk in the spirit and watch what you see. Come on. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Come on. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. The flesh lusteth against the spirit. Read. And the spirit against the flesh. Spirit against the flesh. That's a battle that we fight every day. Come on. And these are contrary, the one to the other. They are opposite of each other. Read. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So that you can't do the righteousness that you would do. The, the, the flesh is fighting against that spirit to be righteous. To keep you from operating at this level. You got to fight, endeavor. That's why, Paul, that's why it's written, endeavor to keep the unity. Endeavor, fight hard to keep the unity. Because the lust in the flesh is going to fight to take that union away from you. Read. But if ye be led of the spirit. If you but if you're led of the spirit of righteousness, come on. Ye are not under the law. You ain't under the law. Come on. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. But now here go the works of the flesh. Come on. Which are these? What? Adultery. Adultery. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Uh -huh. Idolatry. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Come on. Hatred. Mm -hmm. Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such you see all You see all these spirits. You see all these spirits that, hey, that's a tear. You see all these spirits that come out of you when you're not walking in the spirit? So you say, well, I ain't dealing with adultery. I ain't dealing with witchcraft. But you're dealing with strife. So you're dealing with all of it. But, you deal, but you're dealing with envies. So you're a murderer. But you're dealing with revelings. So guess what? you fulfilling every other thing up here. That's what's in you. It just ain't manifested yet. But stay in that spirit and watch what manifests. Everybody know where they come from. You know at one point you had by all these damn spirits on you. Right. Straight up. You was a murderer. You did something crazy. You went to the witch doctor. Got them to make some little potion for you. Like, you, you see what I'm saying? You see how many of these things you did at one time? You, hey, 
you you left the witch doctor. He gave you a potion. You went to the, your girl house. You wasn't married. You slept with her. So now you're in the midst of fornication. You know what I'm saying? You, there's various because you, you don't like the brother over there. And this, you see how, you see what's going on here? All of this is the spirit that's in you when you don't fight and endeavor to be of one mind and one spirit. It's there. So you can say, I don't deal with this. I don't deal with that. Lies you tell. Yes, you do. It just ain't manifest yet. Read on. Come on, you man. As I have, as, as I have also told you in time past, that ye which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You do these things, no kingdom for you. Simple. No kingdom. Why come in here faking it <laughs> with all these spirits and you ain't trying to get yourself right? You ain't getting no kingdom. You know what? Because your job, you ain't trying to get the kingdom. You trying to pull as many out the damn spirit and take as many out this damn truth as you can. You are the weed, the tear that tries to choke the wheat that's trying to blossom. That's, that's you is. The wheat trying to grow and become the the that fruitful uh, uh, stock in the time of harvest when it gets its crown. Put the put put it put it up there. Put the put this picture right here. Put this screen on the screen. Put this on the screen. That's the that's that's wheat in its harvest season. That's wheat in its harvest season. It's ready to be harvested. It's gotten the crown. Your job at the end of this walk is to earn your crown. That's what your job is. That means you got to learn how to transform from wheat to a tear unless that's what you're planted here as. If you're planted as a tear, go hold that. Go to Matthew 13. Go back to Matthew 13. If you're planted here as a tear, you is not getting this crown. Put it back up there. Put the image back on the screen. I want you to see it. This is the, not now, this is the wheat. Let's not forget what we've been going over. This is wheat in harvest season. Give me the wheat and the tares growing together. How do you know? How do you know what's the weed? How do you know what's the tear? You don't know, bruh. You don't know, sis. That's why, read Matthew 13 again. Uh, yes. Hold Matthew. on, let me see it. Let me see it. Read verse 28. Yeah, I don't know. I got to look at it. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 28. He said unto them, an enemy have done this. The servant said unto him. Just read up. Read it from, read the whole thing. Yes, sir. Verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Uh -huh. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. There's tares amongst the wheat. Simple. Put the, look, this, like this image right here, put this one on the screen. This is a close-up. This is a close-up of wheat and tares or weeds. Everything look like tares, don't it? I mean, everything look like uh, wheat, don't it? It's not all wheat. It's not all wheat. There's weed. <laughs> there's tares or weeds. The tares are equal to weeds. In fact, drop this. Let me get the first video. I told y'all we're going to be here. I'm sorry. I see 90. It was 106. So we lost about eight people. I told, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's going, it's going down. You in the spirit if you're still here. Play. Is this the one I want? Yeah, let's play this real quick. Don't pay the Edomite no attention. I'm not playing this for her. What her she about to say don't mean a damn thing. I'm about to show you what it looks like to grow it. Come on. Let's go. Hi, my name is Brianne, and I found with my family outside of Guelph, Ontario, growing corn, soybeans, and wheat. Welcome to our wheat field. Today we're going to be talking about how a wheat plant grows. Wheat is an annual plant, which means it completes its life cycle within one growing year. There are two types of wheat grown in Ontario, winter wheat and spring wheat. The field behind me is a Pause field it. Of Pause it. Pause it. This is real wheat in a field, y'all. You notice you can't tell what the weed is? This is why it's written in the Bible. In Matthew, hold, keep the video. All right. Hold, pause that. Go to Matthew 13, read verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. It says, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Read on. And went his way. And he went on his way. Satan, come on. But when the blade was sprung up. So now, this is harvest season. Go back to the video. This is harvest season. The blade is about to spring up. Come on, read. 
But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, uh -huh. then appeared the tares also. So the tares are amongst the wheat. You cannot tell what the tares or what where the tares are. You can't tell what the weed is. You can't tell which one is the wicked. You can't tell which one is the righteous. Except it has an identifying marker. What is the identifying marker of the wheat? The crown of gold that you should receive at the end of this walk. That is the crown of gold that you should receive and when you give up the ghosts, when you see Christ, you should receive the crown that this wheat has before us right now. But a lot of a lot of Israel ain't going to get this crown. Why? Read on, officer. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Mm -hmm. From whence then hath it tear? So if you sowed good seed, if you sowed the gospel, if you sowed the word amongst this field, where these tares come from? Where did the tares, where did the wicked come from? Tares equal the children of Satan. Where did they come from? Satan planted them here. They were sent here. They were planted here. But we had to allow all of that to grow together so that we could elevate our vibration to see who would get that crown. Who would obtain the crown of life. This is what you got to be thinking about. When all the nonsense is going on, you better endeavor to keep the unity so that you can get your crown. Straight up. Don't let the games that sisters be talking over here, and I'm literally mean and I'm talking about the sisters right now, don't let it fool you. Because brothers know how to work their stuff out. It might take them three, four days, but they're going to get on the phone, they're going to talk, they're going to work it out. Sisters, y'all hold grudges for years. Years y'all hold that thing. And you're going to die with it unless you fix yourself. Go back to that in uh, Galatians chapter 5 and finish verse 22, I believe. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Against them, ain't no law. Drop that, 1 Corinthians 3 and 3. All right, I'm going to push through it. We got two more to get through, y'all. I got my, I'm up, damn, damn, that's a lot. All right, read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Freedom. For ye are yet carnal. Why? Come on. For whereas there is among you envying. So if there's envying among you, you are carnal. Come on. And strife. And strife among you, you're carnal. And division. And division is amongst you. You're carnal. Come on. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Are you not carnal and walk as regular men? We should not be carnal walking as regular men. We are not regular men. We are not regular women. We are the sons and daughters of the living God. That's who we are. You got to walk as such. Drop that. 1 Corinthians 11 and 18. Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 18. For first of all, when ye come together in the church. What? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Read that again. For first of all. He said, but first of all. Come on. When ye come together in the church. When you come together in this church, when you come together in this body, which is the church, come on. I hear that there be divisions among you. There be divisions among you. Paul always been dealing with this thing. There are divisions among you. Come on. And I partly believe it. And he, I partly believe it. Come on. For there must be also heresies among you. There must be heresies amongst here. Why? Read. That they which are approved. Which what I said earlier. That they which are approved. That's why you want to elevate your, your vibration. Elevate your righteousness. Elevate your walk. So that they which are approved, come on, may be made manifest. So you can be made manifest, read. Among you. Among you, come on. When ye come together, therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's supper. Uh -huh. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. Uh -huh. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. Come on. What? 
Have ye not houses to eat? If you ain't, you ain't got houses to eat in, do you come, don't come here to eat. Don't just come here to be eating, man. Straight up. This ain't, you poor or something? Don't come here because if you poor, that's one thing. You say, I ain't got no food. We got a pantry for that. We can help you. But don't have the mindset, I'm going to be a part of the body because I'm, I need, to, I'm, I need, they get food out on Saturday. I'm going to go get me some food. Tomorrow, new moon, I'm going to get me some food. You the damn devil. You ain't coming to unite. Straight up, read that again. What? Have you not houses to eat? That's what Paul said through the spirit of Christ. What? You ain't got a house to eat in? Come on. And to drink in. And you ain't got a house to drink in? Come on. Or despise ye the church of God? Oh, do you despise the church of God? Come on. And shame them that have not? Uh-huh. Read. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? Come on. I praise you not. I praise you not. Because you ain't walking in the spirit. Come on. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, uh -huh. that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Read. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. So this is going to go into why some of you are sick, why you got such certain issues, why you moving out the spirit, like why, why your mind ain't right up here. Come on. This do in remembrance of me. Christ said, do this in remembrance of me. Come on. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. So every time you throw, you drink, you, you, you get your little cup and you, you toss that wine back, that's the blood of Christ that was what it represents. Come on. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. You're doing this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior who, who shed his life, who gave his blood for you to be one with him so that he, as he is one with the Father. Come on. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. You have made a blood promise. You are bonded. You ever heard blood in, blood out? Here you go. This is the up, to the, the utmost of blood in, blood out. Right here. For what? Read that. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. You saying until Christ come, I'm going to keep this union. I'm going to keep this unity. I'm going to endeavor. I'm going to fight. I'm going to do all it takes to build the kingdom of heaven on earth with this righteous family that we have established under Israel united in Christ. Come on. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. So when you do this unworthily, you know damn well you just here for whatever reason you got in your mind that you here and to cause confusion, you do this unworthily. Read. Shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. You're guilty of the body and the blood of of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You are guilty of that. You might as well have just took a, a knife and pushed it in his heart. You're guilty. Come on. But let a man examine himself. Uh -huh. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Come on. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. When you eat and you drink this, when you eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. You're just eating and drinking the damnation to your own self. You better understand what you're doing. Read. Not discerning the Lord's body. Because everything that I went over you not to you, it doesn't concern the one body, the one mind, the one spirit of, 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 our, of our Father, Jesus Christ, with his Father, the Most High God. You don't, you don't see it that way. Come on. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among us. That's them. why there are many weak and many sickly amongst us. Come on. And many sleep. Meaning many die. Come on. Verse 31. That's it. Drop that. Give me James chapter 3 verse 14. James, James chapter, chapter 3 verse go. 14. Come on. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your heart. Remember what we're talking about. Disunity. We're talking about disunity. But if you have bitter envying and strife. Come on. In your heart, uh -huh. glory not. Don't glory. Don't glory. Oh, don't glory. Why? Read on. And lie not against the truth. Don't lie against this truth. Don't lie. Everything is going to be revealed. Read it again, bro. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your heart. If you got bitter envying and strife in your mind, come on. Glory not. Don't glory. Read. And lie not against the truth. And don't lie against the truth. You need to deal with that bitter this and that envy that you, and that strife that you got in your mind. Come on. This wisdom descendeth not from above. Because that wisdom don't descend from above. 
You don't get that from above. But where? But is earthly. You get that from the earth, which is a who? Sensual. Devilish. It's devilish. That's where you get it from. That's where you got your hatred and envy and strife from. Read on. For where envying and strife is. Where envying and strife is, where it won't be is in IUIC Columbia. Where it won't be is in this body here. Right. Where envying and strife is. There is confusion uh -huh. and every evil work. There's confusion and evil work amongst that. And it ain't everybody. Don't give me. Don't give, don't, I wanna, let me put that out there. Disclaimer. It's not all of you wonderful sisters over there. But it's a few of you. And we got, we know who you are. We got your number. We got you. It's a few of you. Walk and tread very thin ice. Because when you put yourself in position, in opposition of this Bible, in opposition of the order that we have set up here at Israel United in Christ, oh, you're going you, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna to get up out of here. Right. You got to go. You got to go. There will be, read that part, read, read that verse again. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion. It's confusion within that thing. And every evil work. No, some evil work. Every evil work. Every evil work is in the midst of that thing. It just ain't manifest yet. Right now, it's just used to murmuring. I can murmur a little bit. Hell, I can talk to this sister. Go ahead. It's going to come out. Hey. It's going to be revealed. And we, it's already been. We just like, I just like to wait. To a perfect timing. I like to let the spirit do what it do before we drop the damn ham on you. Yeah. It's there. And we all we have already lined it up. We just waiting. Just waiting. Because there's confusion there. That's why our sisters, oh, I don't know if it's unity. And wow, well, I think there is, and uh, well, sister such and such, and, and this is why this, and this is why that. No, 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 no. No. I've watched. The growth of this body. Been a part of it. For 10 years, going on 11. Seen it. Hey. I know what it is. And I know what it ain't. And I know what ain't going to exist as long as I can sit in this seat right here. Until the Lord remove me, I'm going to handle no business. Straight up. I'm going to handle no business. You can like me for it or not. Either way, I'm, I put my pants on the same way. Hey. Don't, that don't change. We would not have that foolishness here. There ain't going to be no envying. There ain't going to be no evil work or confusion that we know about taking place because we can't correct what we don't know. But when we find out and the timeline adds up, you're just going to get dealt with. Simple as that. Uh, Yeah, read on. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Yes, come on. Then peaceable. Then peaceable. Gentle. It's gentle. And easy to be entreated. It's easy to be entreated. You can tell the sisters and brothers that roll in that spirit. Because they ain't, they ain't, you know, you can always talk to the brother. Brother, such, such, easy to talk to. Such, 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 they're easy to talk to. You can explain this, that, and the third. You like to talk to them about certain things that, that's, that's brother or sister or ro that's rolling in the spirit. That's, it's easy to be seen. Read it again. But, the, but the wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. It's pure. Then peaceable. It's peaceable, I mean, it's approachable. Come on. Gentle. It's gentle in how, it, in how it deals. Come on. And easy to be entreated. It's easy to be entreated. Come on. Full of mercy uh -huh. and good fruit. Good fruits. Come on. Without partiality. It ain't got no partiality in it. Come on. And without hypocrisy. There ain't no hypocrisy in it. Damn. You said that you wasn't messing with this, but you show all over there acting like you want to bowl with them and you happy. Hypocrite. Hypocrite. Hippo. Hype. Hypocrite. However you want to say it. Read on. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. Come on. Of them that make of peace. Of them that make peace. Some don't like to make peace or don't want to make peace. Because you're a tear. Say it with me. Tear. If you roll it in that spirit, you're a tear. Hey. Simple as that. All right. That was number, what number that was? That was number three. We're on number four. We still got 98 people. Well, all praises. We're on number four. Number four, division in purpose, selfish ambition. We're talking about disunity. Number four, division in purpose because someone has a selfish ambition. Division often arises when individuals or groups pursue selfish selfish ambitions 
instead of a shared divine purpose. Go back to Philippians 2 and 3. Read that Book of Philippians quick. chapter 2, verse 3. Freedom. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. We really read that earlier. It says don't let these things be, don't do nothing through strife and vainglory. What, what do you want out of that? That vainglory. That vainglory causes self-ambition. It creates self-ambition. Well, I know they said this, but I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to tell such, 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 this, that, that, and the third. You're trying to create and make a situation for yourself. Now, when it don't go that way, guess what you want to do? You want to talk ish about the brother who said to do it the right way or to go about doing it this way. Because you got your own selfish ambition about how you want to accomplish a particular task or goal. Don't do that thing. Galatians uh, 5 and 26. We just read that. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26. Just 26. Come on. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Don't be desirous of vain glory because it's going to separate you from the group. It's going to separate you from the shared idea and the shared mission that we're supposed to have together. Don't be desirous of that thing. Come on. Provoking one another. Provoking one another. Come on. Envying uh -huh. one another. That's it on that? Yes, sir. I didn't go there with you. Romans 15 and 1. Romans chapter 15, verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Come on. And not to please ourselves. We shouldn't be seeking to please ourselves. If you're coming in here to, be, to please yourself for your own uh, 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 spiritual and personal boost for whatever reason and, this, and, and, and idea that you have to gain it, you have the spirit, man. Right. You have the spirit. It says, we then that are strong. If you come in here, you, got your, you, got, you know your mind is together. You're strong in the faith. You're strong in the spirit. You have a good understanding of scriptures and how things should be done. It says what? We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. You're supposed to be the brother or sister that come in here and then bear the infirmities of the weak. You're supposed to help. You're supposed to be the crutch for that brother or that sister who can't get right on their walk. Hey. Maybe they're going through something that you've been through already. Maybe they're experiencing something that you've already experienced in this truth and you could give them a word or two that will help them on their way. Bear their infirmities instead of what? Read that. And not to please ourselves. And don't please your own self. I did this and I and I and I and I did that and I did this and I, 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 I. Don't nobody give a damn about I. This hey. is we. Right. We came on slave ships together. We leaving in chariots together. Lord will. Unless you are a, say it with me, a tear. Tears will not be entering into the barn. The hey. barn is only for the wheat. The barn is only for the wheat. The tears, they get burned. Hey. Straight up. Uh, give me, let me see. Yeah, jump, read on, verse 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor. Do what? Please his neighbor. Please your neighbor. Unite with your neighbor. Be on one accord with your neighbor. Come on. For his good. For what? For his good. No, for your own good. His good. For his or her good. Come on. To edification. To edification. To edification. Jump to verse four, uh, chapter 14 and verse 1. Chapter 14. Him that is weak in the faith. Him that is weak in this faith. Come on. Receive ye. Receive that sister or that brother. Receive ye. Come on. But not to doubtful disputations. What is that doubtful disputations? Give me the definition of disputations. The root word of disputations is what? Dispute. Zoom in on it because Marshall can't see. He blind. You want my glass? Got you. <laughs> <laughs> disputations. Come on. Disputation. Debate or argument. It says, be not, but not to doubtful Disputation, stroll up, but that means so not to debate, not to argument. Why? What was going on right here? Because a brother is weaker than another brother, or a sister is weaker than another sister. Don't there's nothing to debate about. There should be no confusion in that thing. You should be helping this brother or sister become stronger, as we read in verse in chapter 15 and verse 1. Bear their infirmities, build them up because they're weak. 
They're weak. Now, this is going into food and all of that, but it applies to everything. Not to doubtful disputations. You're not supposed to already have a preconceived thought or notation in your mind about a brother or a sister because they're weak on a particular aspect in this walk. You devil. You got to fix that. Uh, Romans 13, 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. You see that? That's that's what we got to do. And from there, it jumps right back. It goes, read verse 14. We can read on. We can but, read all the way through. But put ye on the Lord Jesus but Christ. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, you put on that one mind. Christ is not divided. Him and the Father are not divided. They are of one mind. When you put ye on Jesus Christ, you put on that one mind and that one spirit that Christ has with the Father. Come on. And make not provision for the flesh. Don't make provisions for your flesh. To what? To fulfill the lust thereof. To fulfill earthly carnal and mundane things that's the fight that we have to endeavor to keep the unity amongst each other number five we had number five we had number five of disunity number five hatred and hostility we're gonna be in first john for a little while on them hatred and hostility this is the absence of love hatred and and hostility are the bipolar opposites of love that binds us together in this union with Christ. Hatred and hostility are the bipolar opposites of the love that binds us together in this, in this union with Christ. First John 4 and 20. We're going to bounce over. We're going to bounce around from that one. But we're going to stay right here in First John for a couple of scriptures. Book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 20. If a man say, I love God. So a man say, and women say in the congregation, I love God. You ask them, do they love God? Yeah, yeah, I love God. With all my heart, with all my soul, I love the Lord. I love him. They'll say, they love God. Come on. And hateth his brother. But you hate your sister or your brother. Come on. He is a liar. You a damn lie. <laughs> you a liar, sis. You don't love God. You are a liar. You don't even, you, read on. For he that loveth not his brother. You can't love your brother or your sister that just walked in the door sitting beside you. You don't love the sister that you've been here with for three, four, five, six years. How you love God? Make that make sense to me, please. Make it make sense. It can't make sense. Read. Hey. For he that loveth not his brother. If you don't love your brother or your sister, come on. Whom he hath seen. Would you see with your own two eyes every Sabbath, probably once or twice during the week because you meet at an event or something to take place in the body. Come on. How can he love God whom he hath not seen? How you going to love our father who you ain't seen yet? How? How? Tell me. Help me figure this one out. Should I believe you or should I believe the Bible? The Bible just said, if you roll in this tear spirit right here, this disunity, this unity spirit right here, you are a liar. Come on. And this commandment have we from him. What? That he who loveth God love his brother also. If you love, if you say you love God, you love your brother and your sister. You ain't got no hatred. Right. You don't got no grudge. You ain't got no problem. Right. But if you do, sister, brother, in my bishop voice, you are a liar. That's what the Bible says. Give me 1 John chapter 2 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. All oh, these are basic yeah. scriptures. How you don't know what unity is? All oh, these are basic scriptures. You reading four chapters a day? If I say, you read your four chapters a day? I read my four chapters a day. I done read the Bible two, three times. How you miss all this? How did you miss all this two, three times? Right. Read that. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Well, I be. I ain't put that right there. I did not put that there. 
It's, I read it out of my Bible. Officer Marshall read it out of his. Did you read it in yours? Read it again, officer. He that saith, I know him. Put that black highlighter down. Good. Okay? Let's get this union right. Put the black highlighter down. Let's get the union right. Read it. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. If you say you know Christ, you got a personal relationship with Christ. And do what? Keepeth not his commandments. And you don't com you don't keep his commandments. The first and greatest commandment of love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy mind. And the second is like unto it, to love thy neighbor as thyself. What happened? Read on. Is a liar. You is a liar. That's how you know God black. He tall like us. You is a liar. You is a liar. That's what you is. You're a liar. And you possess all of those spirits that we read in Galatians. Because you a liar. You a tear. Hey. You're weeds in the field that's growing with the wheat. Hey. But when the crown, it's time to get that crown, it's going to be revealed. <laughs> that's as simple as that. Read on, bro. And the truth is not in him. Ain't no truth in you. Well, come on, right. Read. But whoso keepeth his word, uh -huh. in him verily is the love of God perfected. If you, when you keep it his word, the love of God is perfected in you. Come on. Hereby know we that we are in him. That's how you know that you are in him who is in the Father who is one, who is united. That's how you know. If you can't do that, you are not in this walk as a union. Give me 1 John. What was that? 2 and 4? I want 4 and 11. 1 John 4 and 11. Yeah. Read Book that. 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. Put this in all your unity uh, 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 pipes and, and, and take a good and inhale all of this. You need to inhale all this right here. If you don't feel like you got unity, you need to inhale all of these scriptures right here. Hey. And let it be inculcated in the crevices of your lungs. That's it. Read. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. If God loved, Christ loved us so much, he came and laid, he came in the flesh, suffered and felt exactly what we go through in this flesh, in this prison that we in, fought every aspect of it, was killed and shed blood for the nation of Israel, us, and then glorified. Through his blood, we are able to be one with the heavenly father. Read that again. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. We ought to love each other because Christ loved us just that much to give his life for us. We should love each other. We should find a way to continue the love amongst each other. Read. No man hath seen God. You ain't seen God. You seen him? Have you seen him? I ain't seen him. You seen him? Hell Have you physically no. seen him? How are we supposed to see him? I'm supposed to see him in you. Right. I'm supposed to see him in my brothers and sisters. When I see you, I'm supposed to see Christ. Because we ain't seen him with these physical eyes. So we should love each other because I know Christ died for me. Christ died for you. We together. We united. Because ain't nobody else died for us. Ain't nobody else did nothing for us but oppress the hell out of us. Hey. We oppress together. We suffer together. Hey. We go through hard times together. Hey. Our lights cut off together. Hey. We ain't got no food together. Hey. All these things, we suffer together. How in the hell can I have hatred towards you? That don't make sense. Read on. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another... God dwelleth in us. So if you don't love that sister, you got a problem with that sister that you can't talk to her about, but you can go tell everybody else, God ain't in you. Read it again. If we love one another, If God you, if, 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 two letter word, me big meaning. If you love one another, come on. God dwelleth in us. That's when God dwell in you. Come on. And his love is perfected in us. And his love is perfected in us. Come on. 
Hereby know we that we dwell in him. Here's how we know we dwell in in him, come on. And he in us. And he in us, come on. Because he hath given us of his spirit. Because he given us of that spirit that he has with the father, that oneness, that love. So if you got hatred, Christ ain't in you. Christ ain't in you. That's Satan. You're a tear, homie. You're a tear. You're a tear, sister. You are a tear amongst wheat. There's plenty of wheat in here, but there's also tares. Read on. Right. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. To be the Savior of the world. We are the world, man. We ain't talking about this damn globe. We the world. Right. We the world. He's the Savior of us. Now we have a gateway. We have a key to eternal life through Christ. We can turn, we can take this key and turn, stick it in the door and turn it and walk through the doors if we are one in Christ. Not no kingdom for you. You ain't coming in that barn. Let me get, what was that? Four, three, first John 3, 16 and 18. I, I know I can read down and keep on going. I could be like, I could, I could, but you know, I'm gonna have a little bit of mercy. Come on. First John chapter three, verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Hereby we perceive we the love of God. Come on. Because he laid down his life. That's what I was just saying. I ain't saying it in the Bible saying it. He laid down his life for us. For us. Come on. And we ought to lay down our lives uh -huh. for the brethren. Didn't I say that earlier? I didn't say it. The Bible's, I got it from the Bible. I'm just quoting the Bible. That's it. Christ laid down his life for us. You should have enough love for that sister to die for. You should have enough love for that brother to lay down your life. You don't understand. That's what this whole thing is about. The leaders are going to die. And many, 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 many of you will be persecuted unto death. Hey. You better learn to love because when persecution hits, and you got hatred in you? You think somebody rocking with you? <laughs> you think somebody rocking with you? Nigga, you ain't rocking with us. You're going to tell them folks, hey, look, the Israelites, they have an uh, underground railroad. They went this way and they went that way. And that's what I did. I heard that this is where they're at. That's what you're going to do. French is, oh, I'm going to tuck mine in. That's their FBI. I'm just going to tuck mine in. Like old boy on Friday. I'm going to tuck mine in. You know, you you gonna you 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 gonna give up the ghost, homie. Let me tell you straight. Hey. Christ laid down his life. The spirit that you have been building for two, three, four years should be rock solid to know that this is my brother right here. We go, we go, I'm gonna give my life. I'm ready to lay my life down on the line every time I pick this mic up. Every time we go before the nations, you don't understand. We are the four our, our forefathers. We are the prophets. We are prophesying against kingdoms. Nations we are prophesying against. We're telling Babylon, America, the elites in America, that they're going to burn, that a black man is going to come from the sky and burn your stuff down for us. That's not a light thing. They kill for less. You just a nigga to them. They kill for less. Hey. Read that again. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. He laid down his life for us, come on. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren, come on. But whoso hath this world's good. If you got this world's good, come on. And see if his brother have need. And see that your brother got need, come on. And shutteth up his bowels and of compassion. And shutteth up your bowels of compassion. Give me the word bowels. What does the word bowels of compassion mean? We're supposed to have bowels, bowels, Bowels of compassion for each other. What does this mean? The word bowels. Let's see. Read that. Bowels. Archaic. The seat of pity. Pity for one another. Tenderness for one another. Or courage. Courage. Come on. Usually used in the plural. Uh -huh. Read bowels, the next one. plural. The interior parts. The interior parts. It says bowels of compassion, meaning in your bowels, in your inside, in your interior parts, you're supposed to have bowels of mercy. For forgiveness, for forbearing, 
for, parent, for patience and charity amongst your people. You're supposed to have bowels of it, meaning it hurts so bad. It bothers your inside, your interior parts to forgive your brother, to forgive your sister. Your interior parts, you want to do so right by them, your interior parts are disturbed for righteousness. Do you have that? If you don't, you got to try to get it. That's what we all have to be striving for. Bowels of mercy, come on. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion. You see your brother hungry, need clothes, need food, water, need shelter. You got all of that. You got this world's good. You are all right. You see your brother going through it, and you shutteth up your bowels of compassion for him. Come on. How dwelleth the love of God in him? How in the hell the love of God is going to dwell in him? You ain't put it there. You have it. The love of God could have uh, he, he could have been could have experienced the love of God through you having those bowels of mercy for your brother and your sister. You know what it's like. Sometimes I see brothers on the street and they be begging. A lot of times I be like, I look at them and I be like, is he hustling or is he hungry? So there's a few restaurants that I know the owners at that I go to frequently because I'm not a lard ass. I can go eat, you know. I don't have to burn the fat. I'm 17.2% body fat. I'm ripped. So I had to put it out there for you lard backs. So there's a few restaurants that I go to where I don't have to pay. Like, I go in there and I don't pay nothing. You know what I'm saying? They feed me. And then because I didn't spend no money, sometimes I'm leaving and I see a brother. They be like, hey, bro, you got $2? You got three dollars. You got you got, a, you got a quarter. I really ask myself because I know what the scripture says. I ain't finna give this man no money to go drink. You know what I'm saying? But bowels of mercy and compassion. That's my brother. So I ask, what you gonna do with the money? Are you hungry, or are you looking to drink? Of course, if he's an alcoholic, you think he gonna tell you he's finna go buy a drink? No. So what he gonna tell you? I'm hungry. So what do I do? I take money and go in the store. I buy you a sandwich here. Here you go. Eat that. Bowels of mercy. Compassion. Now, I don't know him. Lord will, he don't go do nothing stupid. Anymore. He got the strength off of my cheeseburger <laughs> to, <laughs> to go rob somebody. But sometimes, I, sometimes that's, that's, that's how I operate. I really ask myself, is this a bum or is this a hustler? And sometimes, sometimes I'm compassionate. That bowels of mercy, mean, it means a lot. I take my the shirt off my back for the right for the right person, straight up. But it has to be. I have to see that they're in need. They're destitute. That's how we have to be. You see a brother or a sister in need and destitute, and you shut up your bowels of mercy. You ain't right. You're not right with God either. You're not right with God. That's all on that. Verse eighteen. Come on, my little children. Let us not love in word. Don't love in word. Neither in tongue. Neither in tongue. Because it's easy to it's easy to talk that talk. Come on. But in deed and in truth. But in deed and in truth. Let's drop that. Let's go to. I'm gonna get one more. I got about 20 more. <laughs> I'm gonna get one more. Uh let me see what I got right here. Let's get first first Timothy six and three. Let me see what this is. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 3. Book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 3. Come on. If Pray any on. man teach otherwise. So out of all that you done heard tonight. Come on. If any man teach otherwise. And consent not to wholesome words. And you don't consent to wholesome words. Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. And to the doctrine which is according to godly. Uh huh. Come on. He is proud. He is proud. Knowing nothing. You don't know nothing. Come on. But doting about questions and strifes of words. You're looking for confusion. If none of this makes sense of you, and you just don't, it just don't uh, sit well with you. You are offended. You think that I called you a tear. That's because you feel as though you're a tear. If the scriptures line up with your character, brother or sister, you're a tear. Fix it. Fix it. Come on. 
Whereof cometh envy, uh -huh. strife, strife, railing, railings, evil surmising. Evil surmising come from these things. Perverse disputings of men uh -huh. of corrupt mind. Read on. And destitute of the truth, supposing that God gain is godliness. This is what most people think, that this gain is godliness. Come on. From such withdraw thyself. From such people like that, withdraw yourself from these people. Withdraw yourself from these people. If you know that you are that ear that has been letting people come and murmur into your ear about leadership and about lead sisters and about what's going on and what they can fix and how they think they should do it, withdraw yourself because you will be revealed. Come on. Verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Read on. For we brought nothing into this world. You ain't bring nothing into this world. And it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And you ain't taking nothing out of this world. So in order to be considered, I want you to give me the next video, that last video. I want you to really take this into mind. The last video, let's go to 33, I think it's 645. Yep. Uh, back it up just a little bit. Share that. Let's see. Yep, back it up, back it up, back it up. Right there, that's good. I'll, I'll pause it real quick. Now, we went through all of that in comparison and comparing hatred, unity, disunity, the love of the neighbor, the love of brothers, the love of the, this whole uh, uh, a, 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 a cumulative a collection of scriptures tonight has been to determine whether you are a person that is about unity or a person that is of disunity. Whether you are wheat, striving to get the kingdom, walking in righteousness, you're like your, 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 your seed has been planted, your shoots have taken good uh, root in the ground, and you're blossoming and, and becoming wheat to gain a crown, or whether you're just weeds and disguised as though you are wheat. That's what this whole thing is about. The parable of the wheat and the tares. And we're going to read Matthew 13 to close out. But we're going to play this video first. Play this video. Right here, I could cut all this up and juice it right now if I wanted to. But I'm not going to do that because I want an epic loaf of bread. And so what I'm doing now, as far as care goes, is I'm just hitting it with water every so often. It's been a little hot here. But apparently, as the weed establishes itself, number one, it'll outcompete weeds, which is great. Stop and number two, right there. What did he say? As the wheat continues to grow in the spirit, let me think about this in the spirit realm. As the wheat continues to grow, it will outcompete the weeds. It will outcompete the tears. Back it up. Listen to it again. You got to think about this as your spiritual walk. When you elevate that vibration, you are out competing the weeds and the tares that's amongst you. That's what you're doing. When you're showing up to camp 101, when you're showing up to camp, when you're showing up to events, when you're showing up, when you're putting in the brick, when you labor, you labor, you labor, you labor, you labor, you're out competing the weeds. this up and juice it right now if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that because I want an epic loaf of bread. And so what I'm doing now, as far as care goes, is I'm just hitting it with water every so often. Pause it. It's been a little. What's the water you should be getting hit with? You should be getting with the, hit with the water of the word. Give me that in Ephesians. I said I was going to close out, but I got to get that. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Come on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of water by the word. You should be, you are the wheat. You should be getting hit with the water of this word. Hey. This is what's going to continue your growth. Back to the video. Share. Hot here. Share. But apparently, as the wheat establishes itself, number one, it'll outcompete weeds, which is great. And number two, it doesn't really need much in the way of water. Pause it. The whole, my, the whole thing that I want out of this was that that's young wheat right there. The wheat is young. The wheat is young, but there's weeds in there. <laughs> there's weeds 
in that in that little small bed right there. You can come from uh, from the uh, share from uh, the share mode, but in that small what you just saw in that small batch of wheat that he's growing right there is weeds. It's tares. But when you look at that, place that image back up on the on the screen. When you not that one, I want the actual uh the actual picture right there. When you look at it, that little garden that he just had, imagine that little garden being this field right here. When it was young, the weeds were right there. In this picture right here, the weeds are right there. The tares are right there with the wheat. But the wheat gets a crown at the end of the harvest. You don't know what's what and who's who. You have to continue to let your light shine, continue to grow in the spirit with the water of the word, and then let it manifest itself. One more time, Matthew chapter 13. Start at verse 24. Start at verse 24. Let's read it again. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So verse 26 is the kicker. It says, but when the blade was sprung up, because how do you cut wheat? You use what? A sickle. A sickle. You use a sickle to cut wheat. It says, but what now? You only cut the wheat after what? After it has produced fruit. Read verse 26 again. But when the blade was sprung up. So it's time for it's time for the harvest. Come on. And brought forth fruit. It's brought forth fruit. It has its crown. Come on. Then appeared the tares also. The tares were there too. They like, Shh, I'm trying to get in the barn. Hell, I'm trying to get into the kingdom too. Let me let me act like I'm a, I'm, I'm a wheat. Stand sit, sit straight up. No crown on his head. Because the wheat got a crown, but the weed and the, the tear is trying to ease itself in there. It's trying to ease itself in the door. You're not getting in the door. We're going to see that. Read. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tear? Where these damn tears come from? Come on. He said unto them, An enemy has Satan, done this. Satan, the enemy is Satan. Come on. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. He says, No, don't go gather up that wheat. I mean that, that them tares, that weed. Don't go out. Don't 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 try to don't try to pick them up and, 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 and pluck them out. They're gonna pluck themselves out eventually. But if they don't, watch this, read on. Verse 30. Let both grow together. Let them both grow together. Let them come up together. Come on. Until the harvest. Until when? Until the harvest. Until the day that it's time for us to enter into those chariots. Come on. And in the time of harvest, in the, I will, in the time of that harvest, I will say to the reapers. The reapers are those angels. The reapers are those killing death angels. Come on. Gather ye together first the tares. Gather up the wicked first. Gather up the children of the wicked first and do what? And bind them in bundles. Bind them up in bundles. Come on. To burn them. To do what? To burn to them. To do what? To burn to them. To burn them. Don't let this be you because you're entertaining bull, bull crap. Don't let that be you. Come on. But gather the wheat into my barn. Gather the wheat into the barn because that is who's going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So... I pray this has been a good class for you. I pray that you got something out of it. All right? With that, we say shalom, most high in Christ, bless. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity.